Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, I'm back. So I've been gone for a month, uh, off to Spain, uh, was in uh, Madrid, well, started out in Barcelona for a couple of weeks, then Zaragoza for a week, then ended up in Madrid at the end. Uh, then that uh, eight-hour flight back home, just like the eight-hour flight there from Atlanta. And then from Atlanta, an hour back down to uh, Clearwater, Florida, where I live. So it was a great month away, and uh, I'll talk about it uh, now and again uh, in the videos and show a picture here and there. But uh, back to videos. So it, what was great is there was nothing much about Donald Trump where I was going um, so I uh, didn't listen to much American uh, broadcasting and anything that was talking about the American election was just a passing bleep and not an all-day uh, fest uh, like it is over here for both sides uh, Democratic and Republican over here it's just non-stop <clears throat> and what's on YouTube didn't really, really listen or watch uh, very much YouTube so I'm back and uh, here we go uh, we'll start uh, talking about uh, Donald Trump and uh, just whatever pops into my head. So, I'm back. I thought I'd start with this Druid Craft Tarot, and I'll tell you what happened is one of my good friends who lives in Tampa um, mentioned that uh, one of her friends uh, is interested in uh, tarot and also sort of pagan um, has sort of pagan interest, so I thought, well, I'll use this Druid Craft Tarot because uh, my friend Beverly tells me that uh, her friend has signed up uh, to the channel, so welcome. Um, and um, maybe these cards will be of interest to you. So, Druid Craft Tarot, fantastic. And if you don't know, at the end of the video, I'll tell you about these cards um, uh, a little bit more about them. I'll show you the, more of the deck and uh, tell you a little bit about the uh, booklet that comes with it. And uh, so that might be interesting for you. Now, so I'm out of uh, practice. I've been away for a month. I haven't done any tarot reading at all. Well, I did on the plane once for a young woman who was sitting next to me on the way over. So that was interesting. Um, very casual, just fun. So, and um, now she is a, uh, was a, a, a Japanese American young woman. I'm gonna guess to say in her mid to late twenties and uh, was taking some time off from studying, I think, before she decided what she'd do with her life. And uh, so we got to talking, and um, and we I pulled out the tarot cards, and it's always, I have a mini little deck of tarot cards, and it's always such a great icebreaker. You pull those out, start to shuffle them around, and whoever's around you, whether you're in a cafe, a restaurant, or as I was on a plane, it draws their attention. It's a great conversation start. So, um, so there was that. Now, since I've been back, it looks like Donald Trump has just gone kind of nuts. Like um, he's incoherent, uh, rambling rallies and saying some really vicious, can't imagine. So, and still it looks like half the country is ready to vote for him. So let's um, see about his mental state. You know, his father <coughs> had um, uh, mental problems toward the end of his life which most most a lot of us may um, and I think in his 80s his dad was uh, uh, kind of a lot gone mentally but for Donald Trump at uh, 78 I guess he is um, or whatever age he is um, is he suffering some, some actual real mental decline that's what I want to know so that's uh, how we'll pull the cards but before we do that now, just a moment, you know, of meditation.
Okay, so Donald Trump, is he actually suffering some real mental decline? Um, or are his our news channels just editing uh, what he's doing to make him look a little nuts? But I mean, there's direct quotes of what he's saying and there's been a long stream of footage where he was acting very oddly on stage. I mean, kind of swaying to and fro for about 40 minutes while the music played. So just four cards. Is he really suffering some sort of mental, you know, decline of four cards? Donald Trump. This is, this is mine checking out. And uh, so let's see. The signifier card for that is the uh, uh, four of the major arcana, which would be the emperor, and it's called the lord uh, in this pack. You can see the lord in this pack is very much in charge. Okay, this guy has no um, ambiguity, ambu ambiguity, ambiguity, man, I, well, there's my mental decline, but has no qualms about his authority and uh, seems to be a steadfast leader. That's the first card out when we're asking, is he suffering mental decline? If that was the only card I picked, I'd say no. Uh, next to accompany that is the fool. Well, this is interesting. I always think for Trump, this is a, a, a literal fool, but it is off on a new journey. And so this uh, fool, um, this is the reserve of the major arcana. You know, this is the beginning of someone's journey and uh, they're kind of carefree. They've just taken what they need for this journey. They're not necessarily paying a ton of attention to where they're going, perhaps their conscience or some uh, other um, uh, notification or warning for them exists about what could happen to them but uh so the two cards for is he is he have mental decline is it no he's uh, strong in charge of what he's doing but this is a new journey for him maybe different from even his other uh campaigns okay and then the third card up is the high priest the number five which is the higher uh which is the uh, the hierophant which represents the government or the way things are run and um so this is a government card wow this is uh, kind of scary if you don't want him to be in government again. And then the last card, is he suffering some sort of mental decline? Is the Eight of Swords to the extent, well, swords, you know, are truth, justice, rules of law. And the Eight of Swords is always feeling trapped, uh, you know, almost imprisoned by these things. However, the secret of this card is that this person does have a way out. If they can carefully maneuver their way out and they're not tightly bound, so they can find a way out of this. And uh, so for Trump, is he suffering mental decline? It doesn't look like he really is. Um, beyond uh, maybe what anyone would at his age, I'm going to say, uh, that's my interpretation, because he, he's in control, okay, of his, of his domain. Um, it's a new journey and it's dangerous and uh, there's, I would say there's some, a lot of um, carelessness happening. Uh, the government is the guiding force in uh, what's going on in his head. He has to gain the government. And, uh, and he's feeling trapped somehow by truth, justice, rules, and law. What could be true about that? So no, he's just feeling troubled and preoccupied and maybe not being careful about what he's saying and what he's doing and where he's going. So mental decline, significant, I'm gonna say that's out. Um, I'm gonna say that's out. I'm gonna think just his, is it his ego uh, that has so skewed his thinking that he believes whatever he says must be correct and must be right and the, and the, and the right thing to say. So is, is his ego uh, a problem? Three cards. One, two, three. Trump is his ego some sort of a problem in all of this and, and, and is it fogging up his vision of what uh, he's dealing with? Um, again, government. No, it's government. It's clear. He's got to get that job. It's um, the Four of Pentacles, which is really being careful about your value or your money. And I'm going to say it's his money. It's about, I mean, he's really clutching onto this purse, this bag full of coins at his side. He's carefully going to open that uh, box and it looks like he, he wouldn't like throw it open and leave it open from the way the figure in this picture. No, he's carefully going to try to put more value into that box. Government is focused. His value is focused here. And the seven of wands is fighting off wands or uh, forward motion. 
And so, yeah, he's fighting off a lot of actions, but he has defense. And what's interesting about this card is that in a lot of decks, the person wielding this one wand of defense is, some, is sometimes on a, a very unsure foot. Sometimes they're depicted with one sock on and one sock off or one shoe on and only one sock. You know, they're usually showed at a disadvantage. The, really, the disadvantage here, he's, at, he's from a high point, okay? So he has an advantage over these, these uh, attacks, these forward movements against him. Um, they're starting to show, make some, gain some ground, but he seems to be able to fend that off. But you have to wonder, could he fend off all of that? According to the way this looks, I'm going to say this is a fight, and this is worry, and this is uh, obsession. So yeah, no, it's super focused on getting that job, keeping his value, whether it be money or just his personal appeal sort of value, and um, uh, and then the seven of wands. He still is fighting. He's in a fighting position and he is fighting, but there's a lot against him. Okay. Now I've asked this question before, but the nature of this reading has just been that I have to ask it now. Is he going to be president? So we'll do that. Is he actually going to be president? So Donald Trump, is he actually going to be president? You know, what you may not know about me personally is that my home was right in the path of both those hurricanes, Helene and Milton. And uh, I was gone for all of that. So on September 23rd is when I flew out of the country. And then when, so when Helene hit, uh, I knew it was possible, but it wasn't for sure before I left. And so when Helene hit, uh, I live in a um, community with uh, other, uh, other folks around me. And so we kind of look out for each other. And, um, and this is a very solid built place. We're about 50 feet above sea level, which is significant here. Um, and, but the actual beach, Clearwater Beach, where all the destruction happened from Helene and then Milton, uh, uh, less than two weeks later, I think, um, is right here where I am. I mean, five minutes away. But uh, where I live, everything is fine. We had a, two down trees, lots of limbs. Um, I don't think anyone suffered any personal property damage, although the community has fences we're going to have to put back up at a great expense, probably an assessment. And... Um, and insurance continues to go up if you live in Florida, anywhere near the coast, which are five minutes from the beach. Now, the uh, the beach is amazing, washed away. This is a huge resort-driven, tourist-driven area that's five minutes away from me, uh, Clearwater Beach. And if you can look up online, uh, pictures of Clearwater Beach, beautiful. And uh, sand, I've driven through there since we've been back, which is well after the hurricane. And I've driven through that area, which was restricted at first. Um, but there's sand the size of buildings uh, stacked on the side of roads. There's places that that are big empty lots where the other side is the ocean, and this side is uh, was condominiums, mom and pop condominiums, great big, expensive, fancy places, stores, uh, shops to buy stuff, restaurants, actually some homes. And every once in a while, and, you, and you'll see furniture stacked on, alongside the road still after both those hurricanes has already passed there's still stuff waiting to be picked up and branches primarily but lots of furniture along the beaches area you could obviously with the resorts all the, anything on the bottom floors had to be ruined and um, once in a while you'll come across a big empty piece of land you can see through to the ocean and you realize oh well, that's interesting that's for sale but you think oh there used to be like a mom and pop hotel there or that used to be a couple of stores a uh, single story store or or it was something that was so damaged that it was just torn down and so but the people of Clearwater the vendors who are left uh, they're resilient they're trying to make a buck there are tourists who are coming and staying one old mom and pop place had all a bunch of furniture out on the on the on the street waiting to be picked up uh, debris and it looked like a big rock a big stone probably half the size of a Volkswagen had somehow appeared at the end of their driveway and they had spray painted on it, dry rooms, cheap. So folks here mean to survive. Uh, so that's what's, uh, and, but I was lucky that we were away. We had a vacation. We really weren't worried about our place. We felt kind of confident. And then our neighbors took care, although the electricity was out in my neighborhood for four days. So the folks who were here, you know, really had something to deal with, but at least uh, they were safe 
and uh, and relatively undamaged. So, um, is he going to be president? Three cards. One, two, three. Let's see. Is he going to be president? First card, Prince of Cups. This doesn't say president right away, although cups are emotion and uh, heartfelt situations. And the prince <coughs> is almost like a knight. He's he's going to really push for the his remit, which is this cup of hope. So is he going to be president? No, he's going to have a less than strong. He's not a king, not a queen. He's a prince of cups. So down there, the wheel of fortune. The Wheel of Fortune. So it is still, and the news says this too, that it's almost 50-50 race. It's up in the air. And the final card, will he be president? Seven of Swords, Theft and Betrayal. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. This old man is trying to figure out uh, what happened here. And um, I think he's going to be left scratching his head trying to figure out why didn't my theft and betrayal work. I've got the burps. Interesting. Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris. And someone has asked, and I did read the comments while I was gone, someone has asked for, or a couple of people have asked for specific uh, readings, which I will do, but uh, I wasn't even sure if I'd make this uh, recording today and just did it at the last moment. So um, I will uh, go back and get those uh, readings that were requested. Um, so Kamala Harris, will she be president of the United States? Three cards, one, two, three, Kamala Harris. Will she be president of the United States? First card up is the magician. Yeah, she's going to be able to pull something out of the hat. She has everything on the table at her disposal as a magician. She's got the swords, the wands, the cups, and the pentacles. She's got truth, justice, rules, and law. She's got emotion. She's got forward action movement, and she's got value. She's got it all right there to use. And uh, the Two of Cups is a perfect partnership. Now, it's not a good a par a partnership as if there were Major Arcana, if this were the Lover's card, but the Two of Cups is really uh, encouraging. And then the final card, Will She Be President, is still that Eight of Swords. So she's still got those restrictions that she feels like she has to overcome, also having to do with truth, justice, rules, and law. And I think being uh, an attorney, stepping carefully and try making her way out of this, is a key to whether she's going to do one more card will she be president and we get the ace of wands which Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So this is the Druid Craft Tarot, and uh, it's sort of uh, on the magic of uh, Wicca and uh, Druidity, or Druidry. Maybe that's the uh, correct uh, terminology. Uh, Philip and Stephanie Carr Gum, uh, with illustrations by Will Worthington. Really nice deck. Um, they're a little. Um, the car, the box is fantastic because you really feel like you got a nice quality. A gift if you gave that. The guidebook is huge and uh, the only thing I would say is that it's a shame it's not in full color but it gives you some some useful uh, divination uh, for the cards in there so I like that. The cards themselves the one uh, gripe I have is that you have to dump them out of the box which I'm not that happy about but uh, the cards themselves they're huge so some people might find them a little awkward to use but I like them and uh, the divination that you get out of them is amazing. There's so much thought that went into each picture, every element of each picture. And um, so they're very useful in almost any uh, circumstance where you're going to use these. And I like to spread them out like this. Uh, if I'm doing a reading with someone, then I like to usually let them uh, spread them out like this to kind of get their energy into the cards. It's a good way to mix them up without, you know, damaging the cards too much. Uh, which is uh, always important to me. So these cards 
are fantastic. Druidcraft Tarot.